In this video, I want to do a deep dive into how to edit Insta360 videos in the Insta360 app using keyframes, because I think a lot of people get confused about what a keyframe is and what it does. So I want to clear up this confusion using this example. So here's a shot of me in Meklong Railway Market in Bangkok. And it's basically a railway with shops on either side. And when the train comes, they pack up the shops and let the train through. So to start editing this shot with keyframes, I'm going to tap the diamond plus icon on the left hand side to enter the keyframe editor. So why do we need to use keyframes? Well, if you think about your mobile phone, it records flat video, and then you can upload that flat video onto social media very easily. But with a Insta360 camera, we are recording 360 video. This is not a flat video. This 360 video needs to be converted into a flat video so it can be uploaded onto social media. And so the process of converting a 360 video into a flat video is called reframing. And reframing is just pointing where to look in the 360 video at a specific point in time. And the way we reframe 360 video is using keyframes. So at the beginning of the video, I need to tell the app where to look. Should I look at myself? Should I look at the markets? Should I look directly in front of me? Should I look up at the curtains? Or should I look down at the railway track? I think I'm going to start by looking down at the railway track with my feet in the shot. So the audience will wonder, well, why is he walking on the railway track? And I'm going to pinch my fingers outwards to zoom in. So this is how I want the video to start. So to tell the app, this is what I want the video to look like at the beginning of the video. I'll make sure I'm at the beginning and then add a keyframe using the diamond and plus button. When I see the circle on the screen, then I know that a keyframe has been added. And now the app knows that at the beginning of the video, this is what I want the video to look like. And you can make adjustments even after a keyframe has been added. So I can pinch my fingers outward slightly to zoom in further. I can go to the magnifying glass to also choose a zoom level. So I can slide to the left to zoom out and I can slide to the right to zoom in. I can also tap on a preset like linear or mega view to zoom in and out. But the difference between sliding to the left and the right there will be more fisheye distortion and that is the curvy lines. And when I move to the right, there will be less fisheye distortion and now the lines are straight. So between pinching your fingers and using the slider, you can choose a zoom level. When you adjust a keyframe, make sure to tap update keyframe to save this view. Okay, so let's just recap quickly. A keyframe chooses where to look in the 360 video. So in this case, I'm pointing down at the railway track and it also decides the zoom level. Another thing a keyframe can do is adjust the rotation. So I can slide to the right to rotate left and slide to the left to rotate right. And to reset the rotation, tap the reset button. So now to summarize, a keyframe can choose where to look in the 360 video, the zoom level and the rotation. So now that you know what a single keyframe can do, what happens when you add another keyframe in the timeline? By adding multiple keyframes in the timeline, now you can create camera movements. So for example, if I go to three seconds in the timeline and now 
I want to look up at myself and I'll pinch my fingers to zoom out and I will add a keyframe here. If I play this back, you have the first keyframe looking down at the railway track and the second keyframe looking up at myself. Now there's a camera movement from the railway track to myself. Now over here is a three second distance between the keyframes so this creates a longer camera movement. I'm going to remove this keyframe and I'm going to add a keyframe at the one second mark looking up at myself and now when I play this back there is a quicker camera movement looking up from the railway track to myself. So now that we have a look up camera movement at the beginning of the video, over the next two seconds, I just want to focus on myself in the middle and I'll pinch my fingers inwards to zoom out to reveal more of the surroundings and add a keyframe here. So now when I play back this section, for the next two seconds, it is just slightly zooming out, looking at myself. In the next second, I want to show my audience the markets on the side of the railway. So I will move forward one second in the timeline. And I will look towards the left hand side. Add a keyframe here. I will change the zoom level to linear to remove some fisheye distortion. Then I will move forward three seconds in the timeline, or maybe four. Then position the stool in the middle and add a keyframe here. So now over these four seconds, there is a camera movement looking over towards the market. Over the next second, I want to look directly ahead at the railway tracks. So I will position it in the middle and add a keyframe here. And I want to show the railway tracks for at least two seconds. So I'll make sure it's in the middle and add a keyframe here. And so now, over those two seconds, the railway track is in the middle. And then in the last second, I want to turn this view into a tiny planet. So to do this, I will add a keyframe, go to the zoom level, choose the tiny planet field of view, and I'm going to spin around to look at myself, put myself at the top and drag up to turn it into a tiny planet view and update the keyframe. Then I will go to the end of the video, make sure I'm in the middle and add a keyframe. So now if I play this back, this is the result. To export a high quality video for social media, I will go to export, tap the settings, choose the highest resolution 4K, choose the highest bit rate, make sure the watermark is disabled so you don't get the Insta360X5 watermark at the bottom of the video, tap export to phone and that's it. To never record blurry or noisy 360 video ever again, Download my free cheat sheets for the X5, X4 or X3. In here are a list of situations that you might go through during the day and at the bottom I have listed the best camera settings to use and there are lots of situations to pick from like vlogging, 
time-lapse settings, night settings, and more. I also have another cheat sheet, which is a list of 30 ideas. So if you ever feel like you need inspiration for a shot, then check out the camera ideas cheat sheet as well. You will find all the links in the video description.